Hey, I know you. Don't remember me? Look at my face. We've met before. Does the title Jail Tactics Devlog mean anything to you? Oh, there we go. Seems like you're remembering. Hey, hey, welcome to another Jail Tactics Devlog. So, the last little while I've been working on the overworld and some new levels, as you can probably tell from the title. So I guess I'll ramble on about that for a few minutes. My usual process for adding a new feature to the game is researching different ways of doing it, finding a tutorial, following it for like quarter of its length, and then getting bored and figuring out the rest myself. Well, with the overworld map, I was bored of tutorials before I even started, so I just did the first thing that came to my mind. Probably not the best way to do it, so feel free to make fun of me in the comments below, but honestly, I have not ran into too many issues with my winging it method so far. So I really want it to be much like the old Fallout method of you just wandering around and running into random encounters. This way I can add as many or as few as I want and can easily add new ones to every update, keep people entertained as long as it's viable. Also, it frees me up to be as silly as I want. Which is good because I'm going to be silly either way so may as well make that as easy as possible. I have to turn my 3D world into a 2D map and I thought for a half a second that maybe I could do this in Unity's canvas system. Same place as all the menus, but then that half a second was done, I remembered how much of a pain moving around things in those canvases are. See, canvases have all these scaling features to deal with different resolutions, so instead of simply moving things around in world space, you have to use the rect transform and constantly adjust their anchors. There is also some concern about performance when you have a really complicated canvas setup where redraw calls get pretty heavy. So, in less time than it took to explain my reasoning here, I scrapped that idea and just decided to do the simplest thing I could think of, a plane. Yeah, so it's just a big old vertical plane in my project. I pointed an orthographic camera at it. I originally was going to just send the same player object over to the plane, but it started to get a little complicated. The player is tilted for the perspective of the camera, and also the movement would have to be using the Y axis instead of the Z axis. But the biggest issue was that I wanted to use 2D colliders for the map, since they have polygon colliders, which is basically a flat collider that you can draw around anything you want. So instead of using a very expensive mesh collider, I could just use a poly collider around this dune image here. The 2D colliders don't play well with the 3D ones, however, so I ended up making a whole new 2D player object that I can turn on and off. This also meant that I had to double up on some of my scripts. Like I have a player movement 2D, and a scene trigger 2D, and a couple others. They have very similar code, but handle 2D colliders instead. It really kills me on the inside to have to repeat code like that, but it is much easier than hacking in some sort of way around Unity's 2D versus 3D physics battle that seems to be going on. I got this little guy running around, but I needed some points of interest for him to run into. So some very basic little location icons using my bloom shader and animation to give it some extra pizzazz. It's got a trigger so that it only appears when you get close enough, and another that sends you to a new level. Made a script with all the levels as a drop down so I can easily pump these out. I figured once you visit the POI that an exact location will get saved to a file and the icon will change to a location icon. So you can revisit it as much as you want throughout this playthrough. I also made this little water meter so that you can, can't just wander around indefinitely. I then made a truck that you can upgrade to at some point in the story so that you can get further. The truck animation is not done yet so don't look at it. No, no, like, stop looking at it. I'm just going to censor it from now on. You can see I switched the water meter to a gas meter, which will be one of the things that you can make in your home base. I also made this dune a different terrain type that slows you down and starts up these particles from your feet. I figured that it'll be different encounters here, maybe harder ones, and yeah, I can easily add more terrain types now, like a forest, maybe a city, you know, whatever. Lastly, I was like, hey, May as well use the sorting layers on this map too so the player can go behind the buildings. Which I admit does look a lot cooler but was a very strange thing to get working. First off I realized that I had to change the transparency sort axes to be going from the Y instead of the Z. In the 3D world you actually sort your sprites through the Z axes so as you're moving up and down that uh, if you're using your pivot points, then it's when the pivot point gets a higher z axis 
uh, value, then that's when they become drawn on top or below. But since this is now 2D, the sprites change depending on the Y axis. To change this setting in the editor is a bit funky if you're using the URP. It's sitting here in project settings, but disappears as soon as you add the pipeline object. I guess it's assuming that the pipeline object will handle this, but at least in URP's case, I could not find it. So when I was testing this and I wanted to physically change it myself, I had to remove the pipeline, change the settings, then add the pipeline back again and hope that that didn't blow anything up while doing it. It's a little easier in code, fortunately. You just have to use the static graphic settings class to change it. And only problem was that it didn't seem to work for me at first. I actually tried to debug it for like half a day before just giving up on it and working on something else for a while. Then I went back to it and it was just working. This uh, would seem like a good thing, but I'm always the most scared of these kinds of bugs. It's like fixing a broken bridge by adding just one more board to it. And it's like, well, it's holding itself together now, but also in the back of your mind you're like well that could break any moment but with the overworld map in a pretty okay place i wanted to start pumping out some levels to put on it i got about halfway through making this pixel art gas station where I'm, where you'll end up getting the truck when i realized that this was taking way too long I need to start pumping these levels out much faster, so I decided to go look for some backgrounds. Luckily, I thought a little ahead here, and the style that I'm using for the first level is actually just flat pixel art parallax scrolling backgrounds, which are very popular from their extensive use for platformers and the like. I was actually able to find quite a few free background setups from a few different artists that actually match pretty close in style. Since a very unique style is pretty hard to pull off at such a low bit level. So I just took the first artist I found, alphabetically, and started getting level ideas from some of his art. His name is N Enzimus? Asimus? I'm terrible with names, I'll put it up on screen. And I actually have quite a bit of this art for free. As an aside, I totally intend to give all these artists a bit of payout if my game makes any money. But for now, thank God for freebies. So I found this setup for a bunker that was kind of cool. So I started messing around with it and the lighting and got this really cool shadow thing going after a while. Uh, I kept messing around with it and eventually it turned into like a sewer-like place. So I decided to make like a Mario pipe that goes down to it. A little while back, I tried out Magic of Voxels for making 3D voxel models. Uh, I ended up making this cool little truck for your home base. Um, and it was much faster than Blender, even though the knowledge won't be as transferable. But it will speed up production of this game, which is starting to be more and more important. The next level idea I went with was a dried up sea with using this underwater scene as inspiration. I tried to turn all the colors into sandy yellows, but I couldn't quite get the right coloring without just redoing all the color myself individually. So uh, I just decided to make it nighttime. I don't know how this will work. Maybe there'll be like an area on the map that is just nighttime or like a certain distance from your home base will go to night and then that then further on it will go back to day. I don't really know, but I made it and I have this cool looking moon and these stars using my bloom shader, which I very much like. And while the background was all pixel art 2D, I have kind of decided that the stuff in the actual level will be voxel 3D objects. So this meant that I had to make a boat, which uh, as intimidating as that was, turned out pretty good, I think. I know, I was just as surprised as my roommate was when I showed her. But enough about that, let's do quick tips with chillin'. Today is actually really simple, which is good because this is getting really long. So after messing around with in either your hierarchy or your project windows, you'll end up with all kinds of folders that are open. Now I like to close them all up every time I finished a task, but this is a huge waste of time once your project grows a little bit. So I figured out that you can actually close all the subfolders if you hold alt while closing the parent folder. So you can actually go all the way up to the root asset folder here and press alt click and every folder will be closed up for you. That's it, just hold alt and it'll save you a ton of time. So let's move on to community spotlight. Today we're looking at Zlebedev. Zlebedev, that's fun to say, I never said it a lot, Zlebedev. 
She's making her first 3D game, and I'm not entirely sure what the mechanics are going to be, but it looks very charming. Just as charming is her devlogs. They are filled with time-lapse blender models and her thoughts on how to make her little world that much more cozy. Uh, she also has an active Twitter account. I'll leave some links below. Definitely go give her some love. So the roadmap for me is just to pump out a bunch more levels and start adding them and maybe some new robots and cyborgs for you to fight and arrest to join the team. Once I have a handful more, I can make some more diverse GIFs for the game and update the Steam page that, uh, geez, just don't even have the lighting update on it. I unfortunately have kind of ran out of time, as you can imagine, with the hints of crunch that I've been portraying, so I must seek some funding. I did set up a Patreon and a Flutter account links below, but I am terrible at asking people for money, so I doubt those will work out too well. I am going to be selling all my assets I make on Itch. You can already get the truck and the boat for a dollar each if you're interested. Um, thought about a Kickstarter campaign, but it looks like a lot of added work for something that usually does not work out. I could look for a publisher, but I'm not sure how my little low-bit pixel art game will look to them, and I'm not a big fan of losing a huge chunk of the profit. Also, I heard a lot of them are shady as hell. <laughs> so I may have to go back to work. And since it's a rough market out there for remote game devs without any experience, I may have to swallow my pride and get another gig in finance or some other full stack position. But anyways, don't forget to wishlist the game, hit that like and subscribe, and make fun of how poor I am in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.